Greetings to all of you who are today here to listen to our stories of the War of Liberation, our involvement in the War of Liberation, and how we became part and parcel of War of Liberation. I basically come from a very high political family. My grandfather, mm. Shohid Dhirandranath Dutto, was the deputy leader of the House of United India. And he voluntarily chose to opt for Pakistan in 1947 for protecting the exodus and people fleeing to India from East Pakistan to different parts of India because they were minorities, because the nation Pakistan and India was created on the basis of the two nation theory, which my grandfather vehemently opposed, that religion could not be a base or a composition for nationhood. And he became a constituent assembly member. He was a constituent assembly member and he, he opted for Pakistan as a constituent assembly member in 47. And in 1948, in the first constituent assembly session in Karachi, on, which started on 23rd of February 1947, my grandfather, as a constituent assembly member, on the 25th of February in the assembly, he demanded Bangla to be one of the state language. Because he categorically uh, spoke about that within two Pakistan at that time, there were six crores and 90 lakhs people. Six. And in East Pakistan, it was four, four crores and 60 lakhs people. And they're all Bangla speaking. And he made it very clear that Bangla is the language of the commoners, two things he mentioned. Bangla is the language of the majority and Bangla is the language of the commoners. So it should be one of the state language, Bangla. And from that very moment, the whole ling ma language movement started by, at that time, the students from East Pakistan. The whole language movement was initiated with his demand, which created a huge kind of a, uh, emotional volcanic eruption within, within the group of Bengali Muslim students, Bengali Muslim students of the then East Pakistan because they already started to realize that Pakistan is not be a state which is going to give their support and share to East Pakistan because they are the rulers, so everything would be within their control. And it was very interesting because it was uh, taken up immediately by the students of Dhaka University at the time, and it's spread like bonfire within whole of East Pakistan. And at that time, our father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, also was a student at that time of Dhaka University, and he also became part and parcel of that movement. In that very session, uh, Mr. Liaqat Ali Khan, another Constituent Assembly member uh, declared that 
believe that you will not be spared from making Pakistan. He said very clearly that I thought that my colleague is going to come up with something very innocent. He's going to make a very innocent move. But I see from his statement, I can smell secession of Pakistan. And he will not be spared for breaking Pakistan. Breaking Pakistan, that he warned in 1948 on 25th of February in Karachi in presence of the then Governor General Muhammad Ali Jinnah. And as a matter of fact, they never forgot, I mentioned here, because in 1971, during the first hour of Operation Searchlight, the Pakistani armies came and picked up my grandfather from my Kumilla house, from our Kumilla house, along with his son, Didip Dotto. They had taken them to the Kumilla Manor Muti Cantonment and brutally tortured them for more than two weeks. Killed the son in presence of the father, and then the father was killed and their bodies were never found. So this is the punishment which they made it very clear in 70, in 1948, and the revenge they had taken in 1971, they never forgot. He just needed one bullet, but they had tortured, him, which is beyond any, any, any tales, along with his son, and this is what has happened. My grandfather uh, was very active, very, very active in politics, and he was also uh, the health minister of East Pakistan at that time. He made many movements. He was one of the very renowned person within this whole region and very close to Mahatma Gandhi. He was very close to Mahatma Gandhi. He was originally a congressman, but when he opted for Pakistan, he resigned from Congress. He was deeply involved also in the process of making Bangladesh deeply involved, deeply, deeply involved in his life. So it was some, our life was very difficult life, frankly speaking. We never had any smooth sailing life, never, never. It was always in turbulences, one after the other, one after the other, but my grandfather was a challenge taker and he never gave up and that's what he taught us to be. Because I told you earlier that we were part and parcel of the political process. I was deeply involved from my school life with all these anti youth movements, starting from Choi Dafa, Six Points Movement. Very deeply involved. I was a school-going girl at that time. But we found that because my grandfather was one of the initiators, so it was always around the place. People were deeply, I mean, he was the leader. So automatically I was drawn into that kind of a system so that I'm a person, part and parcel of that, I mean, process. And I was being even encouraged by my grandfather and my mother to take part in those kind of, I mean, processions and also organizing at that level. I came to Dhaka University in 68. Uh, things were not uh, smooth at that time. It was going up, you know, the heats. I mean, was bubbling. So instantly, uh, 68, we came in, in November. We had that uh, a serious problem at that time. Uh, we had a cyanide in the university. And then instantly the 69 movement started. And it was a movement, you know, geared up by the students. So all of us, like 
90% of us were deeply involved in the student movement in 69 movement. And then during 70, we had also taken part to encourage people to go for this franchise for election. So that was like our, we, this is like a do or die. We have to win, doesn't matter. We have to win, we have to win because we have to come out of this, I mean, army rulers. No longer we can continue with this militaries. And 70, we all know this fantastic story that landslide victory had taken place and uh, our Malik won Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman became the leader. Things were getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, killing started here and there. On 7th of March, we were all excited to go to Sarwadi Uddan to listen to Bangabundu speech. But very early in the morning, six in the morning, my mother comes with a car at the hostel gate and calls me and said, your grandfather has sent me. You have to just come along with me back to Kumilla. We anyhow, very reluctantly returned to Kumilla. So my grandfather was like standing by the main corridor so i was furious but i had to do the pronoun you know uh, so i went and i did my pronoun and i then held him i said why did you bring me back why did you bring me back and then he held me on his chest he said things are going to get worse he made very clear prediction it still surprises me he said Mujib will have no other options left except to declare wars. Because Dhaka to Chittagong will be a very difficult communication route. And Kumilla is in between and the cantonment Kumilla will play a very significant role. So it will get blocked. So we will have no option. We will be absolutely segregated. And I wanted you to be with me because if we leave, we will live together. But if we die, we also will die together. And then I held him very close. I said, Dadu, what are you talking about dying? He said, yes, we are going to die. It will be a severe blood blood. Just wait and see, there will be a severe, severe blood bath. And I won't be spared. Then I looked at him, I said, what are you talking? He said, yes. Millions of people will be killed. And I'll be the first one. And I said, Dadu, what's going to happen to us? We cannot die like that. He said, and I told him, no, we cannot die. You cannot die. You cannot die. Then I just was shaking him. He said, Dadu, you cannot die. And he said, no. We have no other options left. So, but I was too young to grab the whole thing. But I could sense that something, this gentleman knows politics. But... I didn't realize the extent of his prophecy. All channels were blocked. Only at a night we heard from BBC the extract from Bangabandhu's speech and next morning from All India Radio. So that was our only two sources, All India Radio and BBC. On 25th March, the Operation Satellite. Started by massive killing. Our house in Kumirla was surrounded by armies from that very night. So we got stuck. And it was also curfew was given all over the country, we all know. 
on 26th it was the same 27th also it was the same so we are all stuck in the house me my grandfather my uncle my mother me and my brother and they were house staff about three of house staff so we couldn't go out nobody could come in but on 28th they lifted the curfew around four o'clock for an hour and many of Dadu's friend came rushing to Dadu and said, please pack up your things and let's move out from this house. And you need to go to India. Then he said, no, I was never born a coward. I can never die as a coward. But I need to see my friend's daughter very badly. He mentioned about the then Prime Minister Srimati Indira Gandhi. That's what he was referring to. That I need to see her badly. But I think I'm stuck. I cannot go. On the 9th of 28th, uh, 29th you can also say, at 2 in the morning, about seven trucks full of armies came in our house, broke the doors, took my grandfather and my uncle away. Interestingly, they left us behind. My mother, me, and my brother. The house was full of blood pools. <sighs> Next morning, the neighbors came and told my grand, my mother that they have seen my grandfather dragged into a jeep and a body dragged into a truck. Most probably that was my uncle's body. And they said they were pointing this house because they saw this young woman and you here. So they will come back. So you better flee. So on 29th, we somehow managed with burqa, wearing burqa, which was lended to us by the neighbors. We fled from our house and went, to, went into hiding in, within Kumila, thinking that they would return my uncle because he was no way involved in politics but never realized that that was their mastermind blueprint design to torture the gentleman who was 85 years old for demanding Bangla. Which was the secession point of Pakistan. Then we were, and those people were very gracious, they were hiding us. But then on 2nd of April, uh, I think not, on 1st of April, in the Rajya Shabha in Delhi, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, as the Prime Minister, passed condolence on my grandfather. saying that a veteran leader of this subcontinent has been taken away by the Pakistani armies and killed and had showed respect by one minute silence. And finally, uh, on the 16th of December, the land was liberated and uh, new nation was born
with the blood of 30 million people.